Today, I'm going to show you how to get your data from a Turk FIN20 IO link module to any PLC that supports Modbus TCP. In this video, we're going to be using our Micro 850 trainer, but it also does work on our Micro 820 trainers. And you could use it as an exercise on our Compact Logics trainers. One thing I really like about this Turk FIN20 is just how incredibly intuitive it is. We're going to continue to learn more about that. But it is a multi protocol IO link module, so it does Modbus TCP, Ethernet IP, and Profinet. But you don't actually have to do any configuration to even get it to switch between them. We're going to start with a new program. Then we're going to go into controllers and we have a Micro 850. Now, just to recap, we did a video on how to use the Ethernet IP Class 1 messaging with the L50E, and that also works with this L70E. But the method I'm showing you today will work with everything from the Micro 820 to the Micro 870. So I am going to grab an L50E, and your trainer has a 2080 L50E 24QBB. Select and add to project. And before we do anything, we're going to click on Ethernet here and set the IP address of our PLC. Because if you download this program without doing this, it reverts back to DHCP. And your trainer's default IP address is 192.168.110. And you have a subnet at 255.255.255.0. And then let's right-click Programs, Add, New Ladder Diagram. And open it up. And let's bring down an instruction block and double-click on it. And type Modbus. And we're going to get a couple options in there. We have a Modbus RTU and a Modbus TCP. So Modbus RTU is going to be serial, and the TCP is going to be over Ethernet. We're going to click the TCP, and then I'm going to go ahead and create tags for each one of these. Now, if you click on the top part, it gives you a drop down. But if we double click on the bottom portion of the block, it'll actually get us ready to create it. This will be my message read cancel. And I'm not going to bore you through going through each one of these, but mainly notice as I'm doing it this way, it's going to give me the right data type. So go ahead and create all of them. And this will be the setup for us to read our Modbus TCP data. Now we're going to do the same thing for the right. So I'm just going to right click the rung and copy it and right click and paste it. And I'm going to change all these to right. So I'm just going to click into here, change that to right. And now I can double click on the bottom and it'll all be filled in for me. And go ahead and do that with all the rest of them. Well, we have two copies of the exact same message. And yes, we have a lot more work we need to do. But this is how I see you guys do it before you reach out to me, figuring out why yours doesn't work, is let's go ahead and download this. And if you need any help downloading your program or configuring drivers or want to learn any more about Modbus, hit the subscribe button. And yeah, down in the description, you're going to see a whole course series on this. And we're back into run mode, and we have errors on both of them because we haven't configured anything. But now let's talk through how to configure it. Is we're going to highlight one of the instructions, and we're going to hit the F1 key. And that's going to bring up the help for this instruction. Now we need to open two more of them. If we scroll down just a little bit on the right, you're going to see Modbus 2 Local Param Data Type. Let's right-click it and open a new tab, and then Modbus 2 Target Param. Right-click it and open a new tab. Now we have three tabs here that we're going to commonly bounce back and forth on. And the first thing we're going to need to figure out is this local config here. And that's the first tab we opened up. And the first thing we need is to set the channel number to four because that's always the Ethernet port. So we're going to double click and we're just going to focus on the read right now because if you can get one to read, you can figure out the right. There could be a little more difficulty to the right. So I'll open up my local read and I will set my channel to four. And now let's go back over here. And the next thing we have is our trigger type. So if we have it set to zero as we do right now, it's only going to trigger when it makes a false to true transition. If we put a value in here, though, it's actually going to cycle every so often. So I'm going to set this to 1,000 milliseconds, which will be one second. And then we have the Modbus command. And this is one of the more difficult ones if you're not familiar with typical Modbus. But we want to set our command for reading these inputs to 4. 
So we're gonna set our read local command to four. And we have an element count. Now to figure out our element count, we're gonna go to the web browser and look at the IP address of our IO link module. And if you're using our trainer, its default IP is 192.168.115. And then let's go ahead and log in. That's in the top right here. The default password is all lowercase password. And it does recommend you change it. And I would recommend you change it, but I'm gonna leave it at its default. That way it arrives to you with that password in it. And then go to the documentation up here. And we want the Modbus TCP memory map. And here is the whole layout of our Modbus data that we're going to be reading. So it does start at zero. And it's going to go to 102. So zero to 102 is going to be a length of 103. So I'm going to make my element count 103. And that did give us a different error, but we're not gonna worry about it yet because we still need to configure our target as well. So let's go ahead and open our target up and the message read target. And we need to fill this out as well. Now the one that's gonna trip you up a lot of times is actually this first one. It is the address. One, because we have two addresses to deal with. We have an IP address and we have a Modbus address. And this first one is the Modbus address. So we're gonna go up to our target parameter tab that we opened up. And here is the trick to it in Connected Components Workbench. The values are one through 65, 536. And it says it decreases by one when sending. Now that is these addresses here. And our first address is zero. But since this says it decreases by one when sending, we're actually gonna put a one in here. One. And the next thing we run into is our node address. Now this is the IP address of our IO link module. And the default on our trainers can be 192, 168, 115. We can actually leave the rest of these as they are typically, but let's explain them a little bit. The next thing we have is a target TCP port number and the Modbus default is 502. And notice if you leave it at zero, it's gonna be 502. And same with the next one, we can leave it at a zero because we're not doing any bridging. We have a time out, which you may need to adjust later on, but the default usually works. And it says right here, set to zero to use the default of 3000. Same here, set to zero to use the default of 5000. And false means that we're not gonna close the TCP connection. So at this point, we should have some action going on. And we do because we see our error ID is now zero. So let's right click our message read data and go to variable monitoring and open it up. And there is our data there. Now it is off by one element because of that whole address thing. Is if we look here, we know from previous videos that the IO link input data word zero has a distance measurement in it. And it should be in word one, but when I move my hand back and forth, it's changing word two. Now, honestly, if I was developing a program, I probably would just leave it like this. Very often you will see my bus TCP and RTU data where they're off by one. There's some little lineup issue. We have swap byte issues and a lot of fun things that we're actually gonna learn about in this series. But while we're starting off learning, it would be really nice to have those lining up. That way you can easily follow it. Also, make sure you pay attention through this part because if you don't do what I'm showing you in this next step, you're gonna have to enter all those numbers again. One big difference between Studio 5000 and Connected Components Workbench is if I had the save button in Studio 5000, I get a prompt here that asks me if I wanna upload the data values. You don't get that in Connected Components Workbench. So what we're gonna do is we're going to hit the button that says connected right now that takes us offline. And then we're gonna right click the Micro 850 and we're gonna upload. This is gonna upload the exact program that we just made, but we have upload with logical values here. And then we're gonna disconnect again. And then let's double click on our global variables and get the message read target data. And when we open it up, notice we have our data now. If you did not do that step, when you go to download what we're getting ready to do, you're gonna to have to fill all these in again. Let's go to Prog 1. 
And behind our message instruction, let's bring down another instruction block and double click on this one. And this is going to be a COP. Now the copy command in Connected Components Workbench is a little different than Studio 5000. In fact, I'm going to do a video on it soon. But for the purposes of this, we're going to take this message read data, so MSG read data, and our source offset is going to be zero. Then for our destination, let's go ahead and create, and let's call this IO link inputs. And then for our data type, I'm going to make this an INT integer. And then we have this dimension right here. And this is what we need to change on this one to get our data to line up. Because our data is coming in for the inputs on 0 through 102. And that's exactly what we want this array to be. So we're going to click right here. And you're going to put bracket 0 period period 102 bracket. And then our destination offset is actually going to be zero. And then our length is going to be 103. Now I'm putting 103 in here because remember, zero is a number. So since our range is zero through 102, that's 103 elements. And we can leave the swap blank. Now let's look at this a little bit so we understand why this is going to work. If we double click on our read message data and we hit the arrow by it, the first number is 1. And if we double click on our IO link inputs and hit the arrow, our first number is 0. So go ahead and download that because that's going to line it up for us. And we did waste some extra memory. If I don't say that, somebody will put it down in the comments. And arguably, memory doesn't matter that much, especially when we're learning. I think it'll be easier on you if you have this lined up nicely. I also almost forgot when you're downloading this time, make sure you download with project values. That way you can get those address parameters back into that Modbus instruction. And very happily, we have no error here. But if we right click on IO link now and go to variable monitoring and we hit our arrow, now word one changes when I stick my hand in front of the sensor. And that lines up with what our descriptions are saying in our Turk web browser. Now let's see if we can work to the right message. So we're going to start with the local parameters again. And we'll hit our arrow to open them up. In fact, let's go ahead and hit the arrow on the message read local because we may be able to reuse some of this. In fact, we can. Our channel is going to be four again because we're still going out the Ethernet. And we're going to trigger this one every 1,000 milliseconds. And the element count and the command are going to be different. So let's go back to our help file and look at our Modbus local parameter tab. And that time we were using a read input register, which is usually what you see called the 3,000s. When it comes to outputs, those are usually the things we call the 4,000s. So we can read the 4,000s here with a command of 3. We can write to a single one with a command of 4. Or we can write to multiple ones with a command of 16. And that's what we're going to use here. We're going to use the 16. And then we have our element count. And we're going to figure that up from our web browser over here. So if we go on down here, our outputs start at 2048 and they go to 2113. So if we take 2113 minus 2048, we're going to come up with 65. Now that's the difference in the numbers. Don't forget the first number when you're doing this. So there are 66 numbers in this range right here, and that's going to be our element count. And for element count, we're going to put in 66. And now we need our target config. And same thing, let's go ahead and open up the right target because that may help us out here. Go ahead and make this a little taller. And our address, let's come back to it because we are going to need to do a little thinking on it. And for our target node address, that's the IP address. So it will be the exact same that we put up here. So 192. 
15, and we can leave the rest of them zeros just like we did before. All right, now let's see if we can work out our target address. So over here, our outputs start at 2048. And if we go to our help file on the Tamibus target parameters, it says decreases by one when sending. This one still confuses me every time. It trips me up. But if I want 2048 to get to the Turk module, I need to add one to what I'm putting in the Modbus. So this is going to be 2049. And if we've done everything right, as soon as I enter 2049, our error ID goes to zero. So we are looking good on this. Now it's a little more difficult to test the outputs than the inputs, but there is a way. So if we go back to the main and we go to our output data, we have this area right here, the VAUX control, and this controls the auxiliary pins on our IO link. So even though we haven't really worked with our channel configuration yet, we should be able to turn these on. And there's nothing connected to channel three on your IO link trainer. I left it open for you to do things later with. So we should be able to get to find this and turn it on. And honestly, we should be able to see it switching back and forth here. Let's go back to the documentation and find it. So that's my bus TCP. And if we go to the bottom, here are the VAUX controls. And here is channel three. So it should be bit offset three on 2113. So we want to get to 2113. And our first register is 2048. So 2113 minus 2048 is going to be 65. So we need to go 65 up from the first one. Now, here's where the offsets can get painful because what is the first message write data? We got a variable monitoring on it. The first one is going to be one. So we do need to do 65 plus one. The register we're looking for is 66. So we're going to go down to 66. And it says that channel 3 is bit offset 3. And that's going to be a value of 8 in there. But we haven't done any binary exercises in a while. Let me show you how you would figure that out. If we take a standard calculator and we switch it to a programmer, then you can get your different value types. So I'm going to be on binary. And it says bit offset of 3. So I'm going to put a 1 in. And then we want to offset it by three. So I'm going to click the zero three times. And that decimal value is eight. Now, if I've done all this right, in fact, let's see if we can get an excitement here. If this actually works, we're going to go to our main. We're going to outputs and we're on that value thing. All right. And we're on number 66. And so when I put a value eight in here, we should see this switch. So eight. And there we go, which is really fascinating because now we can take a very inexpensive PLC and have IO link available. Now we still have a whole lot of work to do. And so here's a playlist to keep learning about IO link.